Welcome to the first panel of, of uh, the fourth conference, um, Challenging Capitalist Modernity. Uh, if you had a chance to look at the program, you'll see that one of the main conceptual frameworks that shapes uh, this version or this year's conference is to discuss and resist capitalist modernity as a multi-site regime. So today we're going to start, our first panel will be talking about ecocide as one fundamental aspect of capitalist modernity. Uh, we have, um, we actually have five speakers on the panel, but one of them is on their way. Um, I will briefly introduce all speakers uh, as uh, their turn comes up. Uh, my name is Ben Yakbut, I will be moderating, uh, mostly keeping our speakers in check in terms of time. And then when we have question and answer, uh, I will be moderating that part. Um, so we'll start with Nejmettin, who is uh, replacing Darya Akyol on the program because Darya couldn't make it. Uh, Nejmettin Turk is a PhD student at Hamburg University and he is a member of the Mesopotamia ecology uh, movement. And we will be hearing from Nejmettin first. And just a note to the translators, all the speakers will be speaking in English. So the translation will be from English to other languages. Uh, please uh, join me in welcoming our speakers and Nejmettin. Rojbaş, uh, our comrades and uh, colleagues from North Kurdistan prepared a report about the systemic uh, ecocidal policy of Turkish state, and I will share this report today uh, with you. It is a little bit long. I beg your pardon. Ecocide defined as an extensive damage to destruction of or loss of ecosystem of a given territory, whether by human agency or by other causes, to such an extent that peaceful enjoyment by the inhabitants of that territory has been severely diminished. From an historical point of view, hierarchic and state-based political systems have developed a hegemony over nature, exploited it extremely, and destroyed the earth. These actors have legitimated and marketed their socio-ecological destruction under the banner of development and economy, through accumulation, dispossession, industrialization, and unlimited consumption. The forests have been plundered, the river's flow has been blocked or diverted, and agrarian land has been dried out or lost its richness. Urbanization without planning or weak social ecological criteria also destroyed nature. The systemic destruction of nature of Kurdistan has much more serious dimension than in many other countries. For nearly a century, a systemic ecocide policy has been carried out against the Kurdish people and their geography, with a concept intervened with military, economic, and socio-political aspects. While the Turkish state in North Kurdistan uses different tools and methods to force the individual into the triangle that exiling prison, the aim towards the society is to displace it from its homelands by enforced displacement and evacuation of villages. After 2015, the state started to destroy Kurdish geographies, including urban areas, if the population couldn't be displaced by force and repression. Over decades, North Kurdistan has experienced destruction of its nature with its small and bigger ecosystems and elements by economic exploitation through dams, mining, different power plants, roads, industrial, mono-agriculture, and cutting off forests that lead to irreparable destruction at large scale. In the last years, with the destruction of several cities, killing of thousands of people during the self-governance conflict or semi-quasi-civil war, and with the harassment of thousands of political activists and elected politicians, the forced occupation of almost 100 municipalities by trustees, the ban of 
hundreds of civil society organizations during the afterwards following new totalitarian regime. North Kurdistan has been faced systemic social and ecological destruction or policy of genocide, ecocide nexus. The ecocide policies and methods are implemented by the Turkish state in North Kurdistan have been designed to distract socio-cultural and foundational elements of the Kurdish people as we state following. Concerning water policies, North Kurdistan consists mainly of Upper Mesopotamia where human life has been developed along rivers like Urufas and Tigris. Since 70s, in accelerated way since the 90s, the Turkish nation state built dozens of large and hundreds of smaller dams with the official aim to produce electricity and irrigate millions of hectares land. But that leads to assimilation of socio-economic and cultural structure of the Kurdish society and destruction of biodiversity in the river ecosystem in a very widespread way. The motivation behind the construction is at the one hand economic, but the demographic change assimilation and military or so-called security dimension is also very dominant for the most times as both historically and nowadays geography of North Kurdistan plays an important role in the resistance against oppression and colonialism. The most known two dams regarding Turkish state security policy are in, ones in Dersim at the Munza River and the mega dam Lisu at the Tigris River. There are 11 large dams constructed along the Iraqi border which are officially built because of military reasons. They are described in the 2007 annual report of the State Water Agency as a border security reasons dams. Their security dams are concentrated in three regions with the aim of making it difficult for Kurdish guerrillas to cross the official 380 kilometer long Turkey Iraq border. The dams also serve the state's resettlement policies. Turkish state water policy play a big role in the drying out of large parts of the middle and lower Mesopotamia by storing huge amounts of water behind dams in its territory and using water as a weapon. The people in Syria and Iraq suffer from water shortage for agriculture and drinking. They have started to leave their agrarian lands and move to cities. The whole ecosystem in this wide region have been detrimentally affected by the Turkish state transboundary water politics. In 2020, <coughs> pardon, Elisu Dam has flooded 12,000 years old settlement Hesenkif that has outstanding value in human history within 199 villages and around 80,000 inhabitants were forcibly displaced. The last big natural river system with Turkish state border has been destroyed with millions of species. The plain of Erdur is threatened by the construction of the hydroelectric power planet close to Kars Sarkamish at the Aras River. This plain along the Armenian border is one of the most important agrarian regions in the North Kurdistan. Besides this, agriculture, animal husbandry, and ecosystem have been detrimentally affected. 10,000 of the fishes in the large Wan Lake have died because the spawning areas at the inflow of important rivers have been destroyed by several constructed dams. At the north side of the Wan Lake, several dams would flood areas where the, the bones of thousands of people killed by the Turkish state during the Zilin massacre in 1930s. And the evidence of massacre and memory of the victims will be covered up by the same dam. To understand and security motivation of the state, with the flooding or drying of the settlements along rivers in North Kurdistan, more than a half a million people have been displaced directly. But several hundred thousand more people around the dam lakes suffer economically and are forced to leave their homes to big cities, where they become fully part of the capitalist economy. In economic terms, 
only the state, a number of big companies from the West Turkey, as well as some companies and big landowners from the North Kurdistan benefit from the dams, not the local population and nature that pay have prices through economic marginalization, displacement, assimilation, and destruction in various ways. Concerning mining and extractivism, the extraction of the elements in more known words, exploiting mineral resources in North Kurdistan has achieved the level of looting and plundering in the last years. Currently, this focuses on the province of Dersim, where 145 mining projects in planning and preparation are. Just a few months ago, 85 kilometers long and up to 3,500 3, meters high, Munzer Mountains, which has unique ecosystems, have been declared completely mining area. It is considered that if the en entire Munzer Mountains, where one of the world's cleanest water resources are located, is declared a mining area, major migration may occur. In the northern Munzer Mountains, there is a mine used in the production of the rocket explosives. The southern mountains have been opened for the gold mining. The Munzur Valley is within the borders of the national park. Hundreds of endemic species grow in this valley, and hundreds of animal species live there. If all these mines become operational, all these species and plants will disappear. Nearly 60 mining companies and around Hakkari have been operating illegally without any legal authorization. The state doesn't allow to intervene in the area in any way due to security reasons. In Farkin, district of the Amit province, the existence of the shale gas, which is known as the extraction of methane gas trapped in the bros structure of the underground and trapped in the rocks at depths by hydroelectric explosion and water filled with chemicals, which discovered nine years ago. After the detection phase, the drilling is planned at 3,000 different points. Shale gas and oil production will both consume and pollute clean water to the last drop. Shale gas production will threaten agricultural lands at the highest level and make agricultural production impossible in the region. Along with human beings, other living forms will also be severely affected. The Jinner Group, no one to close the government, has been building a coal-fired thermal power plant on the slopes of Judy Mountain for about six years. The fact that the workers employed here are prisoners brought from China, plunders nature while at the same, at the same time exploiting the labor of prisoners from the other countries as cheap labor. In 2016, 5,000 decades of pasture land benefiting five neighborhoods of Urfa's central Karakupru district was turned into a stone and sand quarry. Limak Holding, which wanted to use the pasture land in this fertile region where agriculture intensively practices as a mining quarry, didn't give up the project even though it received reaction from the public. With the scope of the project, 15 million pistachio trees and animal husbandry will be detrimentally affected. The local people previously donated the pasture land to the state for afforestation, but the state changed its qualification and allocated to Limak. In 2014, a huge thermal power plant project was planned to build, but had to be postponed due to resistance of the people of Judea. In addition to the three-unit power plant project in Silopi, this project is aimed to be implemented in the middle of the Judy. Over 100 military posts of various forms have been built in order to depopulate the region and to provide security for the mines that produce 1.2 million of tons of coal annually. Deforestation. The first politically motivated forest fire in connection with the displacement and resettlement policy of Kurds within the framework of the Eastern Reform Plan took place in 1925 during the massacre after the provocation of Sheikh Said. The Turkish state implemented a similar policy during the Dersim genocide of 1938 and continued it from the 90s onwards. According to official records of the Turkish state, between 1994, 99, 
the Turkish state burned 33 forests and destroyed 9,000 hectares of forest. While the crimes of ecocide are increasing day by day, the legal and security apparatus of the state encourage and protect the plunderer and their business. In the geography of Kurdistan, we are witnessing different phases of the policy of the massacre in addition to rent policies. The burning and evacuation of village, which started in the 90s, and is a different phase of the war concept continues today with forest burning. In addition to the destruction of the forest through forest fires, for the last two years, 30% of the forest area of the region has been cut down and transported by trucks to wood markets in Turkey, mainly in the areas of Shirnak, Judi, Besta, by so-called village gardens, paramilitary unit of Turkish army, rangers, and their networks, with the instruction of the law enforcement forces. Against this, a large Judi march was organized with the participation of various environmental, ecological, women's and democracy organizations from Kurdistan and Turkey. The <coughs> destruction of the historical and cultural sites and habitats. One of the sacred places of the belief of the Kurdish Alavi people in Dersim, Halvori Gizeleri, also has a historical significance due to massacre of the Dersim 37 and 38. The place which has three sacred sites within its borders is also placed uh, where the people of the Dersim, including women, elderly, and children, were massacred in the 1937 and 8. It is historical memory, to, memory of the Dersim people. Halvori Gazeleri, located in Munzur Valley, is an absolute protection area according to National Parks Law Number 2872 and the National Parks Regulation. Despite this system of values, the state and related interest groups are trying to violate the cultural values of the region and carry out the hotel projects. One of the most important sites of history and social memory that has been subjected to destruction by the Elusudem is Hasankiv, a civilization, cultural, and historical heritage of the thousands of years. Although it is on the UNESCO cultural heritage list, it was submerged along with 199 villages and ag agricultural lands. The hydroelectric power plant projects planned for the Zeeland stream in Erdish in 2014 have resumed despite the Council of State decision to step them, stop them. Today, despite the existing judicial decision and the lack of the environmental impact assessment report, the ecological and cultural heritage of Zeeland stream continues to be destroyed and collective memory is being erased. Hafsel Gardens, which was included World Heritage List by UNESCO in 2015, along with the historic walls of the Diyarbakir, has a history of 80,000 years and is an oxy oxygen supply for the city. It has an aquatic ecosystem, is home to 51 fish species, 20 of them is endemic. It also has a forest ecosystem and has a wide variety of the tree species. Despite this regulation, in 2016, this area was declared a special project area by the ministry and structures such as nation garden, cafes, observation terrace, asphalt and concrete road were started to be built. For the cafe alone, 1,095 square meters of green space has been destroyed. Again, orchards are being uprooted and turned into cafes and business places. Many endemic planet and animal species are threatened with extinction. In cities, especially Diyarbakir, Sur, Cizre, where many neighborhoods were demolished during the self-governance resistance and many neighborhoods were evacuated, the people who had previously migrated from the village to city as a result of the state pressure in the 1990s are now being forced to migrate through urban transfer, uh, transformation, uh, transformation projects. The state is trying to sell Toki buildings resembling half-open prisons, which are not suitable for the historical social texture of the localities in the cities. To people at the price of millions of liras to the neighborhoods, they have no financial purchasing power.
as if being affected by the forest fires and the tree filling were not enough, will creatures from wild goats, <coughs> deer, from Dersim to Bingle are being slaughtered all over the country. In 2016 and 17, the expulsion of the Kurdish civil servants and workers from the public sector by emergency decrease and seizure of the wealth of middle and upper income Kurds are among the indicators of the economic dimension of the destruction. <clears throat> the latest addition to this ecological crisis is the use of chemical weapons in the region. It has been announced that Turkey has used chemical weapons and Bennett bombs 2,467 times so far in the federated Kurdistan region of Iraq against Kurdish guerrillas since April 2017, resulting in <coughs> death of the 44 Kurdish guerrillas. While the war has direct impact on the soil and climate, the chemical weapons mixing into the soil and water poses a, a serious risk to living beings. For this reason, death weapons will kill not only humans and animals, but also vegetation in the region, completely destroy the ecosystem of the region where they are used. In this sense, the massacre of the nature carried out in the geography of Kurdistan are also massacres of the Kurdish history and national values. It has also turned into a policy that is implemented with the framework of the complete special war strategy that also affects the nature of human beings. Thank you very much. Thank you, you Najmettin, for this uh, great opening uh, and, and comprehensive opening to our panel.